Hi, you've clicked on to today's tropical tidbit for Friday, June 22nd. Here in the Atlantic, uh, we're still watching this broad area of low pressure that's becoming better defined gradually here in the Gulf of Mexico, just north of the Yucatan Peninsula. This is our only main region of activity, and uh, this is very slowly organizing here. If we zoom in on it, uh, we have a very impressive burst of convection uh, that has occurred in the Yucatan Channel in the Northwest Caribbean overnight. It's the only real batch of convection associated with this. You can see some showers starting to develop on the northern side of the system though as the pressure gradient over here is starting to become healthier uh, with the high pressure over the southern US and the low pressure deepening in the Gulf here. Uh, this is still a very broad circulation. You can see it's kind of a three-pronged triangle shape lobe of low pressure. We have one here one here and another uh, that's starting to develop near this area of convection in here overall making a fairly triangle-ish blob shaped area of low pressure and uh, it'll be interesting to see how this goes uh, w over the next day or so this area right here is probably going to be moving north or north northeastward and then curving around and winding up a little bit next to this line of convection and uh, this will rotate around this other one will rotate around and eventually they'll start consolidating a little bit over here in the central gulf and uh, most of the models have it getting as far north as about here southeast of New Orleans and becoming more consolidated with time but for now it is very broad you can see it's still getting sheared with the convection off to the east of everything uh, but again there is this upper level high pressure still expanding uh, slowly in the Yucatan Channel and as will eventually get over the central gulf and help lower the wind shear and provide a more favorable environment for this system uh, this is a buoy out of the central gulf right about here at 90 west showing the general lowering of pressures that has occurred over the last 48 hours steadily falling now down to about 1006 millibars over a large area and this will likely continue to fall as time goes on. Now, of course, the big question is the track of the system. As we're still talking about this, the models are still uh, disagreeing quite a bit here. This is the GFS, which still takes it out uh, over Florida to the northeast, getting caught by the trough that moves into the eastern seaboard. This is as soon as day four here that it's already making its move out. You can see all the precipitation strung out to the northeast. But we have the Canadian that came back and supported my idea of the Northwest Gulf yesterday. This is the 0Z run showing it in Texas. This is the UK Met 0Z run again showing it going into Texas. And uh, even the European uh, for the last two runs came around to my ideas and uh, showed this moving into the Northwest Gulf and making it into Southern Texas. However, uh, although this is great model support for the Northwest Gulf, it's not as high confidence as it looks. For example, if we look at the ensemble mean uh, for the European at 500 millibars five days out, notice the large area of variance extending all the way from Texas over towards Florida, indicating that the ensemble mean uh, there are members showing the storm located anywhere within this envelope here, all the way across the Gulf of Mexico. Some think it's in the northeast part, and some think it's already to Texas within five days. And that's because, again, of this trough moving into New England, and this ridge over Texas fighting it out. The ridge is trying to capture the storm and bring it west. The trough is trying to capture the storm and bring it northeast. And right now, uh, it looks like it's going to be sitting in this sweet spot right between the two, not wanting to move very much for at least a couple of days, likely stalling out in the central Gulf southeast of New Orleans for a little bit before deciding which way it is going to go. I'm still of a mind that this will come west under the ridge eventually into the southern part of Texas or the northern part of Mexico. Again, as I mentioned yesterday, this trough over the west coast is what's really making me itch here uh, because this trough is hard pressed to really exert an influence at 90 west in the Gulf when we have a trough over the west coast uh, not allowing this ridge to retreat to the west and I think this ridge will eventually flatten out enough to grab this, this storm and uh, move it westward and probably even a little bit southwestward with time because this is a strong ridge. And uh, the other thing to notice is uh, the, the size of the circulation that we're dealing with here. Remember, it has roots. This is our first truly tropical development that we're going to have of the season if this does indeed become Debbie, which it should uh, within 48 hours or so. Uh, but it's rooted within the monsoonal circulation in Central America, and uh, this is a very large area of low pressure, lots of energy. Again, this is hard. If we have a trough over the eastern seaboard, it is hard to grab all of this and take it out. The GFS has been hinting that a small piece may at least come out, if not the whole thing. But it's hard to get this entire area to be dragged out. Lots of times these monsoonal developments do end up getting stuck underneath a big Texas ridge and moving westward. It's hard. It usually doesn't happen so much in June. Alex in June 2010 was a good example of this happening in June. Uh, but usually 
uh, these things tend to get stuck under the ridges because it's hard for a trough to dig deep enough to bring the whole thing out because this is a massive glob and uh, it is rooted down here and uh, thus I think it is eventually going to be drug west here. It may take a while uh, but uh, the models have come more around to my idea than they were yesterday. We'll see what the 12Z runs look like today. We were going to get a recon flight, but it was canceled due to the slow organization of the system. Tomorrow it looks like we will get a recon flight, and then we'll uh, have some more surveillance going into the models, and uh, we'll have a better idea of where this thing may go. But for now, the models are still split. Again, the entire Gulf Coast here should probably be watching this system. We're going to be getting these heavy rains into Florida for quite a while. It looks like the system may come far enough north to get these showers into Louisiana and these other southern states here before the storm decides where it's going to go. So regardless of where it goes, from Louisiana to Florida is going to be getting heavy rains, and I still think that this will bust the dry pattern in Texas and northern Mexico at some point. But again, can't rule out the northeast path, and uh, we will we should watch all along the Gulf Coast for the potential of a land falling tropical storm at least. And and again, if this moves quickly northeast into Florida within the next three or four days, it likely won't become all that strong because it is going to take quite a while to bundle up a circulation this large. But if it follows my idea and moves westward into the northwest Gulf, it may stall enough to have enough time to allow this upper ridge to balloon more over the Gulf and give it a more favorable environment for intensification, at which point it become a bit stronger than currently anticipated, possibly could become a hurricane if it gets more than five days over water. But but uh, we will know more about the intensity after we have more confidence in the forecast track. I do think it will end up going west, but we can't discount it going northeast. And so the entire Gulf Coast should be wary of this system. There's a lot of energy here, a lot of rainfall potential, at least, if not wind, if this does get a chance to bundle itself up. There's a lot of moisture here available, so lots of things can happen with this. And this is, again, the kind of development that we're looking for this season, homegrown mischief that we've had now three times, uh, Alberto Barrel, and now what should be Debbie uh, soon. So we will monitor this closely and we shall see what happens. Alright, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.